five fuel cell cars now undergoing real-world road tests in Canada, part of an $8.7 million five-year program sponsored by the Government of Canada, Fuel Cells Canada, the Province of British Columbia, and the Ford Motor Company. Other than the eye-catching graphics on this car, most people would think it's just another Ford Focus sedan. Not the case. The power plant in this vehicle is revolutionary. Tucked underneath the floor is the latest Ballard Mark 902 fuel cell stack. In an electrochemical process, the fuel cell converts hydrogen gas, which is stored in a pressurized tank in the trunk, into electricity. Not only is this a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, it's a hydrogen fuel cell hybrid. There's a nickel metal hydride battery behind the rear seat. So you have a hybrid system and the fuel cell producing electricity. It goes through an electronic controller and the maximum output is about 85 kilowatts. That electricity gets fed to an electric motor that drives the front wheels. Well, what does that really mean in real world terms? Well, it produces about 117 horsepower and 170 foot pounds of torque. The fuel cell focus emits zero emissions. Only a small amount of heat and water emerges from the tailpipe, which is actually drinkable. At the filling station of the future, you'll fill your hydrogen fuel cell car with compressed hydrogen gas. It takes about two or three minutes to fill a car like this. And the thing is, if you use this fuel properly and it's put in the car in the proper fashion, hydrogen fuel is actually as safe, if not safer, than regular gasoline. Of course, there are only a handful of hydrogen refueling stations across the country, but more are going to be built. There's actually going to be a BC hydrogen highway that starts in Whistler, comes down through Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, and ends up in Victoria. That's hopefully going to link up with the Western United States hydrogen highway that starts in California. But as more of these cars are produced, fueling stations will have to be built. The U.S. Department of Energy has set a goal that we'll be able to produce large volumes of hydrogen at about two to three dollars per uh, gallon equivalent of gasoline. Right now, we believe that minimum 10 to 15 years, uh, fuel cell vehicles may become commercially viable. Behind the wheel of this fuel cell focus, the average person probably wouldn't notice much of a difference. They've done a nice job of integrating the technology into a regular car. There's a few subtle differences. Instead of a tack, there's actually a gauge here that shows the status of the fuel cell, whether it's ready to run or shut down or if it's off. There's also a little sign right underneath the filling gauge that says hydrogen fuel only. Really? and a few lights to tell you if there's any trouble brewing. Other than that, it looks like a regular Ford Focus. Well, starting up a hydrogen car is a little different than, say, an electric car, which is perfectly silent. This one makes a little bit of noise. You take the key and you put it in the ignition. You turn it forward like you would any other car. The dashboard comes to life, and you start to hear a few noises from underneath the front seats. That's where the fuel cell is located. There's uh, compressors in there that start to get everything moving. The status of the car is displayed here on the dash. It's in its startup mode now. After about 15 or 20 seconds, the car is ready to go, depending on the temperature outside. Okay, car set to go. Let's put this fuel cell in drive, and I get to drive my first fuel cell car. Cool. This car feels much like a hybrid vehicle does when it's running just on the battery. It's very quiet and very smooth. You hear a bit of a whir from the electric motors. This vehicle is what's called a mild hybrid. There is a battery pack behind the back seat, and that battery pack is there to assist the fuel cell when it needs a little extra oomph, especially from startup when you need to launch this car or when extra power is needed for passing. The Focus has a driving range of about 300 kilometers and a top speed of 128 kilometers per hour, or 80 miles per hour. A regenerative braking system recaptures energy to help charge the battery. Now this fuel cell vehicle does weigh more than a regular Ford Focus sedan, but I was surprised by how little. 135 kilograms, or about 300 pounds. That's the same as having a big fat uncle in the back seat. So sure, it's a little heavier and it isn't as quick. A run to 100 kilometers an hour takes about 15 seconds. But this is a prototype. I bet you by the time cars like this hit the dealership, they'll have just as much juice as any other car. Well, this is a very exciting time because I can say when I drove my first fuel cell vehicle, it was back in 2005. And what surprises me about this vehicle is how refined it is. It really feels polished, almost like you could drive it off a showroom floor right now. 
So I expect when this car does go into production years from now, it's going to be a sweet ride. So all that comes out of a fuel cell vehicle's tailpipe is water. And if you had all of the cars and trucks running on this, we'd have no pollution. And it sounds almost too good to be true. And it kind of is. If you have to collect the hydrogen by using fossil fuels for electricity like gas or coal, well, that puts pollutants in the atmosphere. But there are neutral ways of collecting electricity. There's hydro, there's wind, there's tidal, there's all kinds of different ways. If you capture the electricity, you got the hydrogen, and you put it in vehicles like this, you'd have no pollution. Uh, we're working towards clean initiatives, clean technology that would produce high volume hydrogen efficiently. One concern for Canadian drivers is whether fuel cell vehicles can operate in sub-zero Canadian winters and whether they need to be parked indoors or outdoors. To make these vehicles commercially viable, we're going to have to develop the fuel cell stack technology so that it can start in colder climates and that's our plan. We're working on the technology and the capability and working with government agencies on the codes such that uh, we will be able to store these vehicles indoors uh, without concern. The fact that I can drive a zero emissions fuel cell vehicle today shows you that these cars really are not that far away, about 10 years until they're in dealerships. And that really says a lot. We can save the environment, no greenhouse gases, zero emissions, and you don't have to burn expensive fossil fuels.